Hello and welcome to my presentation on Beyond Fifth Generation Network for the 21st Mobile Learning. What is the Beyond Fifth Generation Network and how we can assist in the next generation mobile learning education? My name is Young Park of Department Information and Communication Engineering of Baekseok University in Korea. Technology infrastructure shapes learning and learning opportunities. Next generation education is now shifting to a modern model of student-centered learning. This new model reflects the needs of 21st century students and societies. It encompasses the new science of learning and learning styles and takes advantage of all that information and communication technology can contribute to learning and teaching. Talking about content of presentation, after reviewing the introduction and related works, mobile delivery of learning is described, and then beyond fifth generation network, which is a sixth generation network. Finally, conclusions will be discussed. With continued development of the internet and mobile devices, future technology infrastructures are required to help higher education for next generation learning opportunities. The major advantage of mobile learning is that no strings are required. This paper explores mobile delivery of learning in the next decade and analyzes the four surveys to investigate college student use of mobile technology in 2015 and beyond fifth generation which is sixth generation network. Video will become the mainstream media in future education and sixth generation network may provide mobile learning based on video in the next decade. Rapid advancing improvements in wireless networks, better storage, faster processing power, and multimedia capabilities of mobile devices have forged a promising technological framework for mobile learning to proliferate. Mobile learning has become increasingly popular in academic circles because of decreasing cost and increasing diffusion of mobile devices, including mobile phones and PDAs. Mobile learning is defined as a model of training that blends electronic and distance education with portable mobile devices. It provides a self-directed and self-paced interactive learning and promotes lifelong learning because the portability of mobile learning devices moves education outside of the classroom for any time and anywhere learning. This method of learning also provides for global delivery of learning material and can be used to complement in-place distance learning programs. Mobile learning also has the capability to move education out of the classroom and into the learner's environment. Perhaps the most exciting and successful opportunity may be in the delivery of educational content to learners. In 2001, Pransky mentioned about digital natives and digital immigrants that generations are totally different from us. That gens are doing multitasking, parallel thinking, and they like to use multimedia and resources. On the other hand, digital immigrants like to use text with limited resources. They prefer sequential thinking to parallel thinking, and they are accustomed to the single task job. Transforming schools with information, communication, and technology 
means realizing the potential and unlocking our creative capacities using ICT in a seamless way for digital natives who are being exposed to more gadgets and technology than was ever thought possible. Now let's review some related studies in the next slide. Erlin Lento introduced the student-centric model, which empowers our learners to reach their fullest potential. Innovative uses of cell phones in education involve websites like Poll Everywhere, which allow a teacher to create a set of questions that the student can respond to with a text message. In the Innovative Educator blog, Nielsen asks productive ways to integrate mobile learning devices into our curriculums. GCARS and Grant explored in the Internet and Higher Education magazine teaching and learning when mobile computing devices such as cell phones and smartphones were implemented in higher education. Park studied fifth generation network using pervasive computing technologies for ubiquitous learning to solve the data traffic and wireless spectrum problems. Now let's look at mobile delivery of learning in the next slide. Technology is quickly driving the use of mobile devices into the business world. Looking at global e-learning market chart, in 2014, the usage rate of e-learning resources was about 58%, showing the demand for e-learning is steadily increasing. The global e-learning market is estimated to be 165.36 billion US dollars in 2014 and is poised to grow at a compound annual growth rate, in short, CAGR of 5.08% to reach 243.8 billion US dollars by 2022. Mobile applications are developed to enable users to get access to services similar to those that are received when accessing the apps through a personal computer. Tech Navier's analysis in the 2016 report to Linker forecast the global mobile application market to grow at a CAGR of 31.05% over the period. In 2016, 50.9 billion US dollars revenues and in 2020, 101 billion US dollars revenues, almost two times increase expected. Next five slides show four survey results. In 2015, we conducted four surveys to investigate students of Baekseok University in Cheonan City, use of mobile technology with four cases. We provide 172 students and 28 professors with Samsung Galaxy S6 and 10.1 tablets powered by Qualcomm Snapdragon processors. Table 1 shows the most common hardware and software available at the lecture room level. Baseline classroom and enhanced classroom. Four additional tools, networked printers and scanner, audio system, digital cameras and video camcorders, webcams and handheld GPS are provided. And for software, reading software, MATLAB, assessment software, visual, presentation, film editing, audio recording software are equipped. Next slide shows the first survey conducted. 
According to the first survey on the internet usage as shown in figure 1, the email usage rate is 48.8%, but that of a college student dropped by 0.9 percent point to 59.3 percent. The use of email has been decreasing as alternative means such as social networking services and mobile messengers are increasing. Next slide shows the second survey result. Figure 2 shows instant messenger usage in 2015. 89.2% of internet users used an instant messenger, increasing by 6.5% point over that of 2014 year. In particular, it was found that approximately 8 out of 10 people had used an instant messenger within the past week. Next slide shows the third survey result. Use of webcasting is shown in figure 3. When asked about the use of webcasting, 71% reported that their institution uses webcasting. It is used for various purposes, teaching such as online course with 47%, Training such as the use of new software with 42%, broadcasting of live events such as VIP lecture with 42%. In order to look forward to getting the idea of next generation communication networks for future education, we conducted the fourth survey video impact on student-oriented goals. According to Table 3, 91% of respondents believe that video has a positive impact on student satisfaction and 82% agree that it boosts student achievement levels. Outside of learning experience, 67% of respondents believe that it makes student onboarding easier and 64% feel that it increases retention. As you can expect, video will become the mainstream media replacing face-to-face -face interaction and text in future education. In order to cope with the exponential data traffic growth generated by mobile video in the coming years, we will need six generation network to provide mobile learning services in the next decade. Therefore, we are trying to review the fifth generation network and suggest the sixth generation network for mobile learning services. The 5G network is a complete wireless communication system having no limitation is called as real world wireless or worldwide wireless web in short www. The important features of 5G technologies include bidirectional larger bandwidth, less traffic, equally availability of network across the world, 25 megabit per second connectivity speed, data bandwidth higher than 1 gigabyte, and low cost. The 6G mobile system for the global coverage will integrate the 5G wireless mobile system and four satellite networks, global position system by USA, the Galileo by Europe, the Compass by China, and the GLONASS by Russia. The 6G mobile wireless network, which will support local voice coverage and provide very high-speed internet access on air, 
through mobile up to 10 gigabit per second. Global handoff and roaming service will be a big issue in 6G. With this 6G network, video dominating mobile learning can ensure a consistent performance level of education in the next decade. In summary, mobile learning is an exciting opportunity for educators. This form of learning is cost-effective and helps enhance students' understanding of various subjects. By adding the mobile element to learning, we start to see even more benefits, including portability, any time and place connectivity. We conducted the full surveys to investigate students of Baxter University use of mobile technology fit four categories in 2015. From the survey result, we found the video will become the next mainstream media replacing face-to-face -face interaction and text in future education. It is expected that very fast 6G cell phone network will fully support video traffic of mobile learning in the next decade. This concludes my presentation and thank you for your attention.